Vision impaired tennis is an adaptive form of tennis, so instead of having the, the standard bounce, you're allowed to have two or three, depending on your, your sight level. With these adapted balls, which have a, a rattle inside, you're just playing on a smaller surface with smaller rackets. It's always a delight to find a group of people that want to learn. It's been superb. I'm visually impaired. I've been visually impaired all my life. I've always been quite active and heard about London Metro Sports and uh, found out that they played sound tennis. So I went and, and had a go. I just enjoyed being able to play tennis. I spoke to Paul, who is a member of City Synergy, and we got heads together. And yeah, that's kind of been the, the backstory to it, really. I joined the club two years ago, but I just think it's a wonderful thing that somebody's invented for people who can't see who have an impairment of any sort and can still be active and enjoy life and not just sit and do nothing all day. And it's just been fun. Getting your brain to recognise where the ball is via sound. I'm amazed that your brain can work it all out and you can actually hit the ball. When you lose your vision, it's frustrating because you have all this built up energy, but you can't get rid of it. So there's another way of getting rid of lots of energy that you have and you can actually run around and enjoy sport. So that's, um, that's uh, sound adapted tennis, and we're speaking with Paul and Keith um, about it. Um, They've brought in um, a ball, and it, it, you, as you just heard, uh, it makes a makes a rattling sound. And um, Keith's dog Eva, uh, guide dog Eva, is very interested in the rattling ball. I'm glad to say Zebedee, my dog, is not at all interested in the rattling ball. He's much more interested in Eva than he is in the ball. Um, but that, you know, that's just that's just a little bit of local colour to give you an idea of what's happening in the studio uh, this afternoon. Welcome to the to the show, gents. Thank you. Thank you. So t- tell us. Uh, a bit about sound tennis and and where it, were you involved in its inception or did you find out about it uh, uh, later on in the process? Okay, what happened was that um, my colleague Christine um, went up to a similar session in London a couple of years ago and really enjoyed it and was frustrated that she had to travel to London every time to actually have a game. So she gave me a call one day and said, how about getting something started down here? And um, it was from those sort of planning that we actually launched the game um, at the King Alfred on um, in February 2014. Um, we thought we might get perhaps eight or nine people. First day we had 28 people turned up, mm, okay, and right. that included some uh, guests. Um, so it was a mix. There's about 18 people visually impaired, um, blind or partially sighted, and a few people who were there to help us. As volunteers, um, as so we, we were just talking about that, we were saying that um, although um, with the with the the ball making a sound and so forth, you can you've got a, a chance of knowing where the ball is. It's the, the, the line calls and knowing whether the ball has landed in is uh, yeah. is, is down to helpers who are sighted. We can see probably if it's near. Yeah, and if it's a reasonable distance, if it's right on the line. We, oh, Keith, yeah, say, <laughs> once it stops, is your problem. When the, when the ball stops, you've had it. <laughs> yes, yes, can't find it. It, needs, it does need to bleep shout, or something. Shout help. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, when we uh, when you were first uh, in touch, when we were talking about uh, coming on the program, um, uh, Paul, you were saying that uh, there are, there are other things that just sli- that make the game slightly different. In which case, there's there's a kind of uh, call out when the game begins. You, you say yes, play right. and yes, uh, and so forth. Yeah, what we do is, um, to start off is call out to the other person ready and then the other person will say yes yeah. or no or wait or whatever. <laughs> then we say um, play and then give hopefully a second or so um, before serving. And then the same rules basically apply in terms of um, we play to what's called an orange court if you're partially sighted, which means that it's halfway between the um, inner court and the a baseline. There's a line that you play to. So it's a slightly shorter court. Slightly shorter court. Yeah. It's yeah. basically the same as juniors play. A lot and, of and are you? Are you? Um, is there a change in rules in terms of um, serving from the right side of the court and then the left side of the court and then the right side of the court and yeah. making sure the ball comes into that box? No, it's the across same. The net? It's, it's the exactly the same, same from yeah. then on. Yeah. So yeah. that that doesn't sound an easy proposition to me. I mean, it, apart from the fact that you may well be able to tell where the ball is because you can hear it uh, when it leaves the racket of your opponent and when it hits the ground. 
uh, near you, and th- then you've got it. It's a bit of a, I want to imagine, a leap sometimes <laughs> then to, to get to it. But, but being able to serve into the right part of the court, um, do, do, you, do you require some help with that, or do you, do you just get a kind of sense of it after a while? It's when they, when they sh- cry, um, the server will say, ready. So the fact, let me get this right, yeah. ready, and we say yes. And the fact that we say yes, they can line up from the voice where they are. Oh, so right. you've got a general idea where the vo- yeah. it's really from the voice, and you get a tactile. In a competition, you can have a tactile line, and in front of you, the base right. is that right. the, base the base line. line. Yeah. Yes, and so therefore you can orientate yourself a bit there, and then the voice helps you really focus in where you need to hit the ball to. And you, you said you, your first um, your first meeting you had twenty eight folk turn up. Um, how has that panned out over over time? Are you, are you meeting regularly? And, yes. Yeah, and w- good. What's your core group now? We have about, um, last week we had um, nine vision impaired people, um, including two people who were totally blind. So and that's been about the average mm. through the period. Yeah, it's been really good. Which has been really good. And, and you, you and you, about five and you play at the, at the at the King Alfred. That's right. It's yeah. Using the we use a badminton court, which is slightly shorter. It's actually the same court as used for uh, the totally blind. Well, it's called B one in the, the red court. Um, so. Yes, the red court. Yeah, right. Um, it's rather like with the Paralympics you have different side classifications as you have different disability classifications in the Paralympics so B1 is totally blind or very nearly totally blind and in tournaments we play with a blindfold on and then you've got B2, B3 and B4 which are different levels of sight so it means right. people compete with people with their own sight levels and, and you play it's, it's, a, it's a singles game you play doubles as well? yes yeah. Um, how, how does that how does that work work? Is it, uh, one assumes there's um, that there has to be a, a pretty good rapport between players playing together so that they don't get in the way of each other's yeah. shots and so forth. Yeah. So do they take? Do, I mean, in 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 the sighted game, in doubles, you take one basically the right hand or the left hand side of yes. the court. Is, is, is it kind of works it's in that well sense, like that, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. And we just you might communicate by saying it's mine or it's yours, kind of thing. You don't have be. B1 doubles, you have B1 sighted doubles, so you yes. one, one's blind, one's sighted. Right. It saves the running into each other, I suppose. How, yeah. how often it doesn't you... seem to happen very often. No, no. Is that right? No, 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 we don't have, no, no, I don't think I'll run into anyone playing. The only time I've run into people, they're one of oh, Jason Court. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and uh, it, it nice have got a. Um, um, a competition coming up, haven't you? That's um, right. And uh, you're playing a team from London. Yeah. What's what's their name? They're called Metro Blind Sports. Yeah. Uh, and what, who who are you? We S- S- sound sound tennis Sussex. Yeah. So uh, right, okay. Um, they sound on the surface of it, they've got a bit, bit of a funkier name. Have they been going for long? <laughs> uh, have they also been going for longer? Thirty years. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so, so they've really only been playing tennis for about seven years. Yeah, it only but, came up in Japan right. in about 2007. They were the first group to yeah. actually get a demonstration. So they've been going a lot longer than us. We're still going to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> That's confidence for Tire you. Tie a shoelace together or something uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there is none of that. <laughs> I well, hope you play fair, chaps. <laughs> of course, um, of course, of course. Um, so, um, outline the competition for us. How many? How uh, how many um, members of each team have you got? What, how many uh, matches are you playing? Right, you've got you um, four men, four women partially sighted, and three B ones. No other sighted blind players on each side. So there's eleven from each team. That's good. That'd be good. Right, and. Um, and it's, 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 like, it's kind of like an exhibition match to some extent, isn't it? Um, It'd be very competitive. It's very serious, <laughs> yeah, because we, we, we did the national one last summer. Yeah, uh, last October, year. yeah. That was really good. And you do find yourself getting really competitive. How, how did it go? Did well, I lost 2 one, 1 both in singles and doubles. And I was annoyed with myself so much, because the thing is, with, with returning a ball, it does take a lot of practice and... Um, and but it can be so close to you, and yet you can miss it, or you can always you can almost stun the ball, and it still gets past you. So it's just getting that coordinating yourself and getting orientated to hit that ball. But yeah. um, you know, the more you practice, I'm starting to return it more often now, which is great, and it's a lovely feeling. But you tend to 
over whack it because you, you want to kill the ball by the time it's got past you so many times. <laughs> so I really always remember it. one that Keith Mack passed me a cup two or three weeks ago. <laughs> and I, I almost like... tried to get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, it's uh, too good for me. <laughs> the, the ball is it's not a, a normal tennis ball, obviously, because it's got sound, but it's also it's a kind of it's a slightly it's a larger ball, slightly yeah. larger ball, and it's a kind of sponge uh, ball, isn't it? Yes. yes. There's um, a centre core that's hot, very you know, hard core that's got the beads or whatever's in there to promote the sound. Right, and, and, and the rest and is spongy. Yeah, it makes this, a nice sound though. Yeah, and 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 this design, I assume, just keeps the the pace of the ball down slightly. That's right. Yeah, yeah. unless you're playing poor, of course. <laughs> you know, Keith, in which case, well, you've well, got I'm... no chance. <laughs> um, when is the uh, event taking place at uh, the King Alfred? The event is actually going to be at Withdean uh, Sports Complex. Oh, you're, you're at the Withdean for this one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is, is that the, they have an outdoor or an indoor court? They have indoor courts there? Yes, uh, they've now got two indoor courts. They've recently um, redeveloped the tennis area. Oh, so right. it's a, right. um, a lot better than it used to be. And that's, and um, that's on the 11th of April. April, yes. And 10.30am uh, till 6pm. That's right. Um, are you you're also, are you after new members through this through Absolutely. this event? So mm-hmm. will people get a chance to have a go if if they come along? Do you think? Well, we've hired an outdoor court as well for people to practice on. So I'm sure there'll be an opportunity, and maybe in between games we could possibly fit people in, depending on how time goes. But if not, we can always find another opportunity. There's uh, usually something going on in the King Alfred every Friday. Yeah, that's every Friday, isn't it? And so. as the summer comes, we'll be going out and playing on course outdoors as well. We played outside in, back in the Take Part Festival of Sport last year. Right. And actually, we thought it was going to be, you know, just because of the background noise difficult, but actually it was really quite amazing. The ball was so... Because within a... Especially at King Alfred, it's quite echoey, so you get a lot of problems with echo and stuff, which yeah. can disguise the, the ball. Or yeah. Outside, you just re- get a real vision of where the ball is because it's just so clear because there's no ricochet of sound so it really stands out we're speaking with um paul gillett and keith turner uh who play uh, sound adapted tennis and um as we've explained um it has a a ball that has a, a kind of rattling nature to it so you can tell where it is are there other rackets adapted in any way they're just short handled aren't they yeah, um, initially, we had to use uh, short um, tennis rackets, so 21 to 23 inch. But they've now this year changed it so you can use um, any size you like. So a number of us have now gone to 25 inch rackets. Although I noticed with B1, it only, you can only use yeah, up to yeah, 23. Because yeah. I think the court's smaller, isn't it? The red court. Well, you'd you'd think you know the the bigger the racket, obviously the the better your chance of yes. hitting the ball. So uh, th- th- there probably needs to be some kind of ruling on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I saw from the, we we played earlier on the um, that kind of introduction to the sport, and um, one of the the ladies on there, she she looked um, well. Let, let's say she was, looked like she might be getting advanced in her in in age. Um, but seem to be enjoying it. The, this game is kind of good for, for all ages, as long as you're moderately, as long as you're able to move about, I suppose. Mm. Yes, uh, that's right. I think one of the great things about it is that it is so inclusive. Um, the lady on there, is, uh, Margaret, is 92, and is absolutely yeah. amazing uh, the way she's able to enjoy it. She and has played tennis all, all her life yeah. and was a former dance teacher. So as a sort of natural... Health, and it, but she hasn't played tennis for a, a few years since her uh, side deteriorated, and it, it's been brilliant for her as an opportunity to get back into doing a sport she loved. Mm. But uh, I think it's one of the things we really wanted to be is something that's open to all sorts of people. Um, at the moment, we're mainly for adults, but in the future, we want to have opportunities to introduce it in this. Uh, sport in, in schools in school, where uh, often people who have poor sight don't get the opportunity to participate so much. Yeah, and especially when you've left left school, that's what I found. Um, when you leave school at 16, you're in a kind of void where you're at school there might have been provision, um, but once you leave school, it's difficult then to sort of do sport because who's going to facilitate that you know and that's that's a difficulty so yeah having, for sure having all different options and stuff i mean i <clears throat> i run a lot or not so much at the moment because i've got a, a problem with my ankle 
and I so I joined a local running club, and they were brilliant. They're brilliant, and I've, I've sort of um, had to say about probably 12, 13 years of now I'm a bit injured now of just <laughs> loving running and road running and being guided by people, and it's amazing. And because I just feel that when you can't see or you know different disabilities really we're creatures of you know we need to do we need to be active and to keep healthy anyway but you you just get all this built up energy and you don't you know you want to do something with it and to actually go out and do something and use it up and feel good for it, you know about it is, is you know that's how it, you know, it should be really being <laughs> humble Keith doesn't tell you how many marathons he's run or triathlons yeah I, I take it there's a number then. Yes. Well, I've, I've not done many marathons, about a four, but because uh, uh, but I've done triathlons. Yeah, no, that's I've that's a number. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mainly. Just, just thinking <laughs> thinking about one marathon is enough to make my legs wobble. <laughs> but we'll they're brilliant. Are you your personal best? My personal oh, marathon's not really. I'm um, three fifty, I think three fifty one, something like that. Three hours. 51. 51 minutes. My halves are better. I do a 133 half, which is a lot better. That's I'm not got marathons very, I'm very good in marathons. Right. Do, do, you, do you come up against kind of prejudice or discrimination or any kind? Have you found you, that your Things have got a lot case. better. I'm, I'm sure say, they have. They? Yes. Things have got yeah. a lot better, but it, it, it's all to do with attitude, I think. Some, of course. You know, for some, I have I approached a club before, I won't make, name any names. And they weren't up for it, really. But they were slightly elitist, I think. Um, but another club, who I will mention, Arena 80, when I went running, they were brilliant. And they just started me off and excellent. And my, my friend, actually, actually, I gained a friend through, um, year, this was years ago, who looked after my last guy, Dog a Vet. And we started running then. And we went up to St Dunstan's. They suggested the method of being guided. And then nothing stopped us then. It was amazing. But it's so liberating, you know, to be able to get out and just do physically what you want what your body wants to do but you know not being able to see stops you actually facilitating doing it because you know you'd end up running into a ramp post or a tree or, you know you just can't do it like that in that sense so you need guides and the same with the tennis we've got the adaptive ball so it's you know it's about enabling people because with the technology you yeah know. no absolutely you think of the technology for people with vision or with no disabilities there's masses of it and yet I always feel that the, the world of disability always lags a little bit behind. We're always, we've got to find solutions to the next development, you know. But, but things are getting better now. Things are getting better. So you were talking about here about tennis and, and running. Uh, what, other, what other sports are, you, uh, are open to you? To, I mean, in, in a kind of a general sense that, that you, can, you can get down to the local centres and, 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 and get on with it. Again, there's not, a, I don't think there's a loads local, but I've started doing blind football that's at the university that's a new thing coming up now just right. started that's really good um, and actually you can go along there if you're if you're fully sighted and then they just blindfold you anyway so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite fun um but you know there's things in the paralympics there's things like goalball and you know there's various different sports you think those things would be leaking out and uh, yes. into the wider community i that's suppose the they aim. must, must yes. be on their way Go uh, goalball we've yeah. we played about 10 years ago yeah, uh, right. down here um it's one of these marmite sports you know i would love it or hate it <laughs> what, what is it called I, goalball goalball uh, how's that, how's that work um, yeah it's um it's teams of three players opposite each other and you're actually on the floor you all again you all wear blindfolds in case some people have got a little bit of vision and you've got this <laughs> it's quite a big ball isn't it a heavy ball almost size a medicine ball yeah <laughs> and it actually again it's got be um some sort of um beads or something inside which make the sound and you've got to stop the ball by either blocking it and then um, throwing it back it's really good actually but actually, we, you know, it, again, it gets very competitive. The height, can we, you know, in the Paralympics, it, you know, we had our GB team, and they are very, very good. And the standard, did, and that's the thing about it. We've got all the Paralympics now, all these sports, and the standards are going up and up and up because the competition is there. It's taken seriously for one reason, so people really work and train hard at it, and you know, they, they, you know, records will be continued to be broken, and it just get more and more competitive. It'd be amazing. We're speaking with uh, Paul Gillett and Keith Turner. Um, we're talking about adaptive tennis, and we're also sound adaptive tennis. We're also talking about other sports uh, that are out there uh, for folk who, with disabilities. And 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 you're quite right. You, 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 I don't know what the proportions are of um, disabled to able-bodied, but we, we're certainly not reflected in the uh, the amount of things that we can all do. Um, and, and we had. Um, 
just recently on the show we had uh, uh, there was a some students who were putting together a wheelchair basketball uh, event at uh, at Brighton University. So I think that's something that wouldn't have immediately occurred as a thing to do several years ago, and I think that no. that is more uh, more prevalent now than it than it was most uh, certainly. A few of us went off to the wheelchair tennis tournament to the um, Olympics. Uh, st- um, in the Olympic Park in November, and that was absolutely amazing to see the standard of the top um, wheelchair tennis players. Um, and it's one of the things we hope at some point there will be sound tennis in the Paralympics, but we've probably got a few years to go yeah. to catch up. For but, sure. But it is not just about you know being the very best, and that it's about grassroots sport as well, and there should be grassroots sports for people with disabilities or disabled people. Yeah, it really should be. It's so important. It's your health. It's it's not just your health. It's a social occasion as well. You know, you get to meet like-minded people, and you know, it's great. We we're, we're going to talk about um, city synergy, which, um, and and what what they provide. And then do tell us about them. Okay, city synergy is a social group for people who have died and partially sighted. We started it in two thousand and two. Um, we realised there was a a gap in the market that um, no one else really was providing. Um, there were individual things, that, there were some buddy systems where people were getting alongside others to go for walks or tandem rides, but there was no um, thing that really people could get together as a group and go for a meal or go to the pub or go to the rest or, or go to the theatre or play sport together. And so um, myself and um, someone else got this group going and um, we've been going now 13 years and uh, put on something like 300 yeah. activities over that time well that's, that's great. great that's great what, yeah. what, how can people find out about that they can find it out through our website um, they, or they could contact me um, they want to give my number if you want to give it you're welcome the easiest way is to find it through our website which is www.citysynergies all one word c-i-t-y S Y N E R G Y dot org dot UK. And that will give you lots of details about us and details about the things we've done and, and our future plans and also all the details of getting in touch with us. What have you got, what have you got coming up uh, in the near future? Right, we've got some walks coming up um, as the weather gets nicer. We usually try to have a sort of coffee morning or something each month. Um, We've got a games afternoon and um, we had to do some temping bowling, mini golf and um, go, we've got a, a theatre um, event which is audio described so that um, there's an organisation called Vocalize which actually gives a description which you can hear through headf- headphones so that people, so we can actually get some more detail of what's going on like for instance what people are wearing. Sure. And, you, and uh, you, having uh, taken part in this, they're obviously they're um, they're a, uh, a benefit, they're a, a, a something um, that you can you can get into, so that you can go and do things that that perhaps you you would have been um, blocked from, or you couldn't get a full enjoyment from. But it, things like um, audio described theatre are they? I so suppose it's something you have to really get used to because they are a, a kind of distraction, like two voices going on, two things going at the same it can, time. It can be. <laughs> they normally, I think, like with the TV, with the audio description on TV, they try and do it in between dialogue right so, so it's done so that very you've professionally got, yeah like I would have and I suppose the theatre is the same well. yeah, yeah. But it does right. make it you know from, I don't watch a lot of TV now but at the cinema you can st- you can get it at the cinema I think like the Odeon um, and it does make a, such a lot of difference to the film it really enhances it because you know what the vision you know you're not left to your imagination anymore which sure. is quite good but you know it's nice to know what's really going on <laughs> <laughs> so did- uh, we're here imagining a better society, I think. We've, we've been talking just about that. Um, uh, we, uh, I mentioned we, that we, we were going to talk about um, the game a little bit more um, and that um, there are there's a, there's adapted rules. So um, you can play um, blind or partially sighted or sighted. Um, so a sighted person will, will, has to return the ball on the first bounce, but if you're vision impaired, you get an extra bounce. And if you're blind, you get three bounces before you need to return the ball no, but we're saying here that you, you can play a, a kind of a mixed game so you, within families so somebody who was partially sighted yes. could play somebody who was fully sighted with, with with these rules in place yeah, which is 
yeah. that's one of the great things is really that it is something that includes people in and often um, it can feel that those who have poor sight feel on the outside of um, whether it's within families or within social groups or, or just generally in, in the community and that's what really we want to do is to encourage more and more people to participate whether it's in tennis or any other activity and actually to reduce a lot of the isolation mm. and the impacts from that which can often be poor health and uh, difficulties in life generally. A, a, yeah, a, a disability that leads to uh, a, a wider disability and an and, and inability perhaps to com- yeah. to communicate with your your wider environment whereas yeah. uh, these the groups that you're, you're saying that, yeah. that, that your group has, has allowed you um, Paul to go out and uh, and get involved in, in other groups in, in the table That's tennis right. yes. um, uh, group, which is is not not for the disabled only. It's a it's a it's a fully able bodied group. How do, you, how do you play table tennis with partial sight? You, you find that that it's possible, more possible more, actually. It's more more possible. The advantage with table tennis is you're playing a small area. You've got a very good contrast between the ball and the table. Right. And um, yes, so. Of course. Um, unless you're playing people who are absolutely brilliant, in which case you've got no chance. But, um, but with, with um, many people, it is still possible to have a really good game. Let's uh, let's uh, re- retrack our, uh, our steps over um, the sound tennis competition that you've got coming up. It's uh, in April, on the 11th of April, uh, at Withdean Sports Com- Complex between 10.30am and 6pm. Um, is there an entry charge? No. So you can just come along and uh, watch for as long or as yes, short a time as you like. Spectators and you are very will, welcome. And Thank hopefully you. you'll even get a chance to have a have a go, all being well. If you want to find out more about that, um, you can email paul at soundtennissussex.org.uk. That's right. Yeah. Um, or you look at the website, uh, soundtennissussex.org.uk. Um, there's also the City... What a city synergy yeah. uh, group that you run. Um, yeah. That's a city synergy. That city as you'd expect, and synergy, S Y N E R G Y. Uh, look up that website for uh, things that are going on on there. F- um, and we, we we hadn't covered, and we were going to talk about the national uh, tennis competition. What, what what and where is that? Right. Well, there are two tournaments that we're actually going to be involved in. One is up in Newcastle. And uh, there'll be pe- people from there are a number of teams who've actually started up playing sound tennis over the last few years, and so it's become increasingly a sort of competitive thing and also a friendly uh, rivalry going on. And so each of us are doing our own thing, our own tournaments. And so there's one tournament going on in Newcastle, which we're going up to, and I'm sure it's going to be great fun. Mm-hmm. And then the national sound tennis tournament happens in London at the National Tennis Centre, Roehampton, and that's sort of the October. And last year, two of our players actually came back with trophies on that, which was amazing considering it's virtually the first year playing. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Uh, Paul and Keith, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for being on the show uh, today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank and, you. Uh, and bringing uh, Eva the, the dog <laughs> and a fine uh, shaky rattly ball, which I'm very interested in now. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you.